Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real world self publishing and small business experience with you. So let's get started with today's show. Now, today we're going to talk about influencer marketing and self publishing. Influencer marketing is one of those hot marketing trends, but does it really work for self publishing? Now, the reason that this subject came up for me was I got an inquiry during this whole coronavirus pandemic from an author who creates homeschooling educational materials. And the thought was, well, while all of these parents have to do homeschooling, it would be a great sales opportunity to sell these materials during this time. In theory, that sounds like a great idea. There were a couple of problems though with this. The first problem was that all these materials were not packaged yet into something that could easily be sold online. So there would have been months of development to get them to that point. And by that time, the whole pandemic panic might be over, schools might reopen, and so the uh, demand could go from a peak to plummeting within a very short period of time. Now the other problem that was going to be with this sales effort was the interest in doing influencer marketing or using social media influencers with large followings to help promote these materials. Now, let's talk about how influencer marketing works. Basically, influencers are people on social media who have a loyal fan base, no matter what size, but usually marketers want those with the larger audiences. And the biggest problem that I see for self-published authors is that you have to find these influencers. Now, there's a very famous popular marketing guru who suggests that you go to Instagram or Twitter or whatever platform that uses hashtags, you find people who are using the hashtag that's relevant to the topic of your book or your product, and then you reach out to all those people that are using the hashtag and see if they want to be an influencer for your deal. You want to send them a free product or whatever. Well, the big problem with that is that some of the hashtags, especially the more popular ones, could have millions, literally millions of posts. And so you'd have to dig through every single post and look at the bios and then determine if the person is worthy of reaching out to. That could take months. So if you're trying to get this launched pretty quickly, this is not the method for you. There are influencer platforms out there. All you have to do is go to Google and you type in influencer marketing or a term very similar to that. And usually you'll see a lot of ads or a lot of search results for these platforms that try and bring together influencers and seller advertisers. That is really the way to go if you're looking for influencers, uh, simply because these influencers get on these platforms because they're looking for deals. And the, then they handle, these platforms handle a lot of the back end stuff for you that you don't have to, so you don't have to mess with payments. The, the payments go through to the influencer through the platform, and they just handle a lot of the logistics for you. Now, some of these platforms have a free or free trial uh, for their services, but some of them have a fee as well. But it's money well spent if it saves you tons of time and it helps you get in touch with people who really want to do business with you. So then you have to look at the pay for performance versus pay to post situation. And this is why I also think it's a real money sink 
for self-published authors to be using influencer marketing. Back in the early or even pre-social media era, the way influencers got paid was seller advertisers would give them a tracking link that they would post on their own websites. And then if a sale occurred because of that link, the influencer or website owner would get paid. Now, I did some of that. And it was a complete waste of my time. It took so much time for me to insert the HTML codes and post it on my social media. It was just so time consuming and it didn't really net me a whole lot of money. So I quit doing it. But now it's several years later and social media has matured and influencers are more likely now to ask you to pay for them to even post anything. And you kind of understand that simply because these people spend a lot of time and energy and sometimes money to build their loyal following that now you can tap into. So don't be all put off if an influencer that you approach wants you to pay for them to post because they're just trying to recoup their investment and they've created this for you. So here's the other problem with using influencers for self-publishing. Influencer marketing works really, really well when the product is highly visual, clothing, housewares, beauty, all of those kinds of things that create beautiful pictures to post on Instagram or uh, beautiful videos or something visual. When you're talking about a book or educational materials or anything like that, it's not very visual. It really takes a lot more text and other types of content to make a sale. You can't just see a picture of a book and say, wow, that's great. <laughs> and everybody's just clamoring to buy it. It just doesn't work like that. Also, with influencers, they're probably not going to read your book before they post about it. So the best they can say is, here's a new book, check it out. It's not exactly a ringing endorsement of your book. Now, if you require them to read the book before they post about it, well, they may even charge you more money because that'll take hours of their time. And it's not a quick ROI. But here's the best influencers for self-publishing. Remember when we talked about the book discovery survey and friends and family were the top source that people use when discovering books to read? Yeah, that's your best source of influencers. So you want to get readers to be that friends and family that shares your book with friends and family. It's word of mouth marketing. It's the cheapest, but it's a slow go. And it's difficult to control the outcome, but it's usually the most effective in the long run. So I would prepare for word of mouth versus influencers. So that's my thoughts on that. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate it if you would rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or Podbean. And of course, share The Heidi Thorne Show with your friends and family on social media. And if you like the video podcast better, that's great. 
Just go to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and you'll get an alert when a new video is available. And if you'd like to see my self-published books, they are on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is type in my name, Heidi Thorne, find my author page, and all the books are listed there. If you'd like to connect with me, my website is very simply HeidiThorne.com. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I'll look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day!